থ্যাংক ইউ দাদা নমস্কার আমি সুদীপ্ত আমি প্রথমেই এখানে উপস্থিত আমার বয়োজ্যেষ্ঠ সকলকে ওকে আমার সশুদ্ধ নমস্কার জানাই আমি অডিবল ওকে সো আমি আজকে যেটা চেষ্টা করব যে আমার এই পুরো জার্নিতে ইন মাই টু ইয়ার্স অফ জার্নি অ্যাজ আ রিসার্চ স্কলার অ্যাট ডিপার্টমেন্ট অফ সোশ্যাল ওয়ার্ক হুইচ এভার আই হ্যাভ লার্ন হুইচ এভার আই হ্যাভ কেম আপ উইথ দ্য ফ্রেমওয়ার্ক হুইচ আই ডেভেলপ ফর মাই সেলফ টু ফাইন্ড আউট দ্য অ্যাকাডেমিক জার্নালস অর লাইক টু গো ফর পাবলিশিং আই উইল ট্রাই টু শেয়ার with you people so uh, without making any delays i will jump into the presentation uh, the title of my presentation is an orientation to academic writing and publication or publishing you can say so what happens being a scholar generally we think that uh, we need to go for a phd thesis only but in reality which i have understood in two years with interacting with professors scholars and researcher for academic uh, academic fields uh, who are working in their fields very wisely they always talk about the research papers not only the thesis because there is a genuine issue why because whenever i am going for a research thesis the thesis is basically the whole idea of my topic or my initial research problem which i have explored and written it in a form of thesis or a book so what we generally found that if i ask you that go for a book which is more than 300 pages and then i also again come up with you that go for a article which is written only 30 pages which one you will choose people will definitely go for a 30 page not the 300 page so the basic thing in research is that to present your idea in a composite manner in a short manner in a gist so that people can understood the topic the idea and the way of exploration in a very short time in a short term so that is why the research articles or present uh, or publication comes and while you are going for a interview for example for a research scholar interview or for a, uh, a position like research a researcher in some institute or an uh, academician or a uh, assistant professor they will definitely ask for an article not for your thesis so that is why it is important so there is a saying in hirok raja deshe we all know about satyajit ray that he said era joto beshi pore toto beshi jane ar toto kom mane i'm coming again era joto beshi pore toto beshi jane ar toto kom mane which means the more they read the more they know and less they bow it means that a research scholar who is studying for his in his field for a like uh, like 5 years or 6 years he has saved some kind of depth in that particular field so whenever anyone comes and says ke na na whichever you are saying is not right will not bow he will ask again and i think personally being a researcher or for a research scholar this is the main motto of a researcher or a main quality in a researcher that he should he or she should ask questions and there the research comes that why i am asking the question and how i am answering or addressing that question is the main thing for a researcher so that's why i took the example from hirok raja deshe or satyajit ray so what is academic writing so it's a special formal and structured way of writing which is basically used by the research and academicians to write something it's not like a poet who is writing a uh, like uh, like a poem or a writer who is writing a story why 
because it is evidence based and the arguments which are i am trying to present it should be logical in that sense if it is not logical then one will ask question because jara joto beshi pore tara toto beshi jane tara toto kom mane so the last one is it varies according to the field of study and also referred as scholarly writing why because in vishwabharati we have different different departments not only social work so if i come here and speak about the scholarly writing in social sciences only then social sciences student may be benefited but the literature student or the other students who is from arts for example for uh, from kala bhavan to be specific they will not get anything because for them the writing or the way of writing will be different in which way i am writing or our scholars are writing so the characteristics of academic writings i have pointed out some of them is like formal structure your writing should be in a formal uh, structure it should be structured there should be objectivity it should not be subjective that uh, i think that this will happen or i think that have happened there is nothing there is no scope of i am thinking or i think there should be evidence third one is the sources and the references from where i get the idea or from where i am getting the references or from where i am getting the for example support of my argument i have to mention it properly if i don't mention it then the scholar will question the other peers will question that from which particular document or particular uh, evidence you have come up to this idea that you were whatever you were saying or you, if you are arguing something it is logical and right what is the where is the credibility second one uh, i have mentioned third one i, I guess uh, okay so fourth one is the logical argumentative and critical it should be logical there should be a comma sorry it should be logical argumentative and critical i can't only write a story or uh, as uh, uh, i i just follow a style like a story uh, and uh, came up with a paper and i'm going for a publishing house and i ask for them uh, ask for a publication they will not give me the publication because it is not critical in that sense so it should be critical as well the second last one is the uh, clarity and the preciseness whatever i am writing it should be clear like uh, there is a saying in english that it says write in such a way so that your grandparents and grandchildren can understand whatever i am writing if the readers are not getting it there is no point of writing there may be someone who can say ke the most uh, like uh, critical papers in that sense are very tough to understand but it is up to you that how you are presenting your argument and how you are presenting it to the scholars so that they can understand if they don't understand they will not going to refer your paper okay the last one is it should be correct errorless and consistent so here someone can question that how it can be errorless there may be some error so it depends on you that how much you gone for to make it errorless there is nothing in this world and especially in social science which is errorless error should be there and that is why when you go for a sampling we consider plus minus 5% of errors that is why while someone is asking for a proper framework of sampling in social science we say we have 95% of confidence there is no 100% of surety or possibility that whatever you have done in sampling is totally right there must be some errors okay but here error errorless means are you aware of your errors if you are aware of your errors then it is errorless in that sense okay so there are different types of or uh, styles of academic writings so uh, i am mentioning some of them is like research article or proposals essays 
chapters, reports, thesis or dissertations, reviews and commentary. What happens? Generally, we think that whenever we write, we are writing a review paper, uh, sorry, a research paper. But it is not like that. If I am doing a, for example, uh, a, 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 I am doing a, re a research paper on what the students of Vishwabharati thinks about library. So there I will get an empirical set of data. I can ask people and I will get the data. So that research paper is going to be a research paper. But if, for example, if I studied something in the internet, gone through a lot of articles and have written a paper, that cannot be said as always as research article. That can be categorized under review articles. So there are slight differences, but whenever you are going for a publication, you have to know that in which area you are going to publish with which data you are going to publish and whether it is a review article or a commentary or an essay or a, for example, research article. Otherwise, what will happen when you submit your paper into a publication house, if you consider your paper as a research article, but it is actually a review, they will not uh, they will not uh, like uh, entertain you to publish. They will reject, reject at the first place because it is not a re research article, it is a review paper. So you have to categorize your paper according to your needs. Okay, so wo what are the do's and don'ts in academic writing? I think most of us know what is uh, do and don'ts in academic writing because we have the RP course here. So the do's are like, it should be in formal tone, the grammar should be correct, it's use neutral words, don't use any biased words in your writing, be objective, clear and concise, use proper referencing, it's like this. In don'ts, we have, don't use jargons. Do you know what is jargons? Jargons means using certain terms in such a way so that people don't understand it. Whenever you were like it, this happens many times our professors are like uh, teacher says, okay, uh, this is very much simple. You have written this uh, particular line in a very simple manner. Standard Bharata, we have to uh, strengthen the standard. When you start to strengthen the standard, you use certain words, which are similar to the initial word, but not understandable easily. In that case, it becomes jargons. For the readers, it is difficult to understand that what you are trying to say. Second one is the using the terms is like such as I think, which I mentioned earlier, that don't use this kind of thing, I think. While you are writing a academic research paper, there is no place of think. You have to be objective. There should be not any kind of subjective findings at least in the results section. In discussion or in way forward, you can mention that, that the researcher considers if this, this, this can happen, then the situation can change. That can be in the way forward, but not in the results section, at, I, like at least. Okay. So no personal pronouns, for example, I or me, I have found that in this, in my research paper, don't use these kind of terms. It should be in a, like secondary terms, there should be no plagiarism. Never refer any data or fact without any consent. Many times it happened that uh, someone have published some uh, research paper using certain data. For example, for me, I was working with the BRLPS, block, uh, Bihar Rural Livelihood Promotional Society, and I had a set a lot of data with me, but I haven't published anything with that data directly. Why? Because if I go for a publishing, I have to take permission from the higher authorities of BRLPS. Until and unless I get the permission, I can't go for a publication because it is not according to their policy. Okay. Last one is the use of AI solely to write an article. Right now what happens, many people have written their articles research papers 
using only AIs. Many uh, like reports have came up that most of the scholars, not only in like developing countries like India, but also in other countries as well, developed countries as, as well, they have like written the whole paper using AI. Then they submitted it into a Springer Nature like journal and they have detected it. Because they have this detected uh, detect, uh, detection, sorry, detection uh, softwares as well, which can detect whether you are writing using your own ideas or you are using any AIs. You can assist, you can take the assistance of AI. There is no doubt because uh, sometimes it has been told us, uh, like people used to tell us that don't use AI for any means. But after attending some workshops, in national level, I have came up with this idea and understood that people are accepting AI, but not to write, but to get ideas. For example, if I go uh, for a searching that uh, how I can formulate a research question uh, on gender and development, it will take three, four, five months. But AI can give you some ideas that you can try this, you can try this, you can try this, you can try this. So there you can get some ideas that in which field I can at least go explore and write. So there is no harm as per me till now, because you are not like, uh, for example, uh, forging any data or you are not taking any data directly from the AIs. You are just taking ideas and ideas. Initially what happens, uh, there is a question in our uh, research literature review, uh, course that uh, the ideas which you are working from where you get the ideas. So the questions are like very simple It's like uh, from my previous experiences, from the books I have read uh, like for, for last two years, uh, from my guide. So these kind of answers was the common answers back then. But right now, if someone says, I have taken this idea from an AI, I think if you are not copying it from somewhere else, it is not that like wrong thing. You can't say it wrong because many tools are there right now in the, in this world, they are uh, like very open to use and they, they are the assistive tool for a researcher. So until and unless you are uh, unethical, it is fine to take ideas as well. But if you are taking, for example, ideas of what Sarah mentioned from Socrates, you have to give the citations or like some references from Socrates, Socrates said this kind of thing. And from that only I get the idea. So there is no harm right now uh, in Springer nature. I have found one thing. There was a manual for the academic writers who submit their papers into that journal. So there they have written that um, uh, if someone is using AI or any, any kind of assistive tool, you have to mention that you have used, you have used that assistive tool in your research. You have incorporated the data or the assistance from that particular services or the software. So there is a portion as well. And uh, slowly, gradually it is like uh, evolving because the AI is also evol evolving. So before we start writing, what we do, this is a question. I will ask you people that before writing, what you do? Generally, what you do before writing? Yeah. Mike, please. It's like, Abhi Bangla kora bolle ki saw jabe. Tumra lekhar shuru kora rage just before to start the writing. What you do actually? Hello. 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 Yes, I'm sorry. First of all, we have to review the review. Review. Particularly, the area. That is the point. That is the exact point. 
we go for a reading. We read first about that topic, about that idea, about the sub ideas, sub themes. Until and unless we get a clear picture, we don't go for a writing. Okay. So in a workshop, uh, I have uh, like, I have the opportunity to meet a person who was actually uh, the teacher for the people who newly appointed as an IAS. He actually a teacher from the Lavasana. He said me one thing, like uh, our whole group, that before writing, you have three things to do. Okay. So what will be the three things? So we guessed uh, like vague kind of things that we will go for a review and this kind of thing, that kind of thing. So he said only three things, read. The second one is read. And the third one is read. Go for a reading. First you read. You read about like about everything you are, that is coming to your mind. After the first stage, when you think that, okay, I am saturated with reading, go for another reading. That is like reviewing the whole reading. Then you write. Okay. So first one is the read, 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 read. Second one is read, read, write. Third one is read, write, read. It is your reviewing process. It's like when you completed your writing, you have to read it again. That whether there is some mistake or methodological issues are there or nothing like that, it is okay to publish or like that. So this is the basic process which he have taught me. Okay, so where to start? That to read, I need to get that first article or that first re research paper which I am going to read. So where to start? So there is no actually hard and fast rule that you have to do like this kind of, this kind of, this kind of thing, magic, and you will get the first article to read. It can came up to you from your scholars, other scholars. It can came up to you from your guide. It can come up to you by any chance. It, come up, it can come up to you through a newspaper article. It can come up to you through a video, anything. There is no hard and fast rule that an idea, to develop an idea, you have to go to that article first. And there is a particular uh, framework to find out that article. Nothing happens like that. In the initial first year, which I have understood that my professor especially, he asked me uh, in which topic you are going to like study. I said, sir, I have uh, uh, like different, different areas and I am very much enthusiastic about different, different things. So he said, okay, that is why you are lacking. If you have different, different interest, you can't collaborate all of them. So we have to find out which is your prior interest. So to find out the prior interest, you have to read and that can be anything. Okay. So the second one is it's us who decide that where to start. That from which article I will start. There is no one who will going to tell you. If he's going to tell you that uh, this is your article, you go for it. You will get the notion that this is my article. When you searching in a database, for example, Scopus or ex for example, JSTOR, a lot of article will came up. Still now you are searching in databases. No, for every searches, there will be, for example, 300 or 400 or 3000, 4000 uh, 4, results. You don't go for all articles. You go with a particular article. No. So it is with your instinct at the beginning. But after you consider like if you like uh, came up with an idea that I, will, I am going to do a research on this particular matter, then you don't go for a like vague kind of search. Then you have to go for the advanced search and narrow it down to your particular topic only. Otherwise you will be distracted. Okay. So generally we start reading in which we are getting interest, which generally leads us to our exact field of exploration. For example, I have given an example. For example, I am interested in gender related studies. So initially I will search a keyword in JSTOR that is gender. In gender, under gender, I will get a lot of papers. Among those papers, I will go with, for example, inequity among the genders. 
So there I will get an idea that reproductive health of the transgenders are not in that sense studied before. So there is a scope of study that the transgenders, how is their reproductive health is? What are the inequities or challenges they are facing? So initially at the beginning, you may know, you may or may not have that idea that I'm going to study that particular topic, but you know that I will go for a gender related study. So this is how you can narrow down your ideas. Okay. So when we explore our vague ideas, it become more realistic and researchable as through many uh, more common senses, we can sense many aspects, but also of them are not scientifically. Okay. So it's like, it's sometimes it happens. Ke, uh, uh, we use our common sense. We use our common sense in research also. So one of my professor, what she says that common sense is common sense is not very common. That is okay. But don't use more of your common sense in research. If you use only common sense in research, it will not be logical. If it is not logical, then peer will ask question that where is the logic? You are just using on the basis of your common sense. It means you think there is no evidence. You think that this will happen. That will happen. So that it's not, it is not researchable. Okay. So our topic which I am going to work, it should be researchable. So what is researchable and which, what is not researchable? I think Nimaida will discuss it later or uh, can discuss it more profoundly than me. So the finding the very first document to read, where I can find the first document, which I am going to read. This is the most important and toughest phase for any researcher. Because he or she don't know where to find or what to find. find. So major problems comes there. So there are a lot of, uh, for example, research article repositories are there, which we can go. And uh, there are a lot of search engines as well. Uh, okay. Okay. So I have mentioned that most effective and easiest way to find out a document in in academic research is to search through academic databases or search engines. For example, JSTOR. Why I mentioned JSTOR at the top? I will come to that later. ResearchGate, ScienceDirect, PubMed, and there are a lot of other databases as well. So why I mentioned JSTOR? What JSTOR does is like, it not depends on the, uh, for example, uh, journal. You are just going for a search which is more advanced than Google and more academic than Google. If you search the same term, for example, reproductive health in Google, it will give you more or less 1 billion, 2 billion results. But if you search the same keyword reproductive health in JSTOR, you will get an like a precise amount of articles through which you can identify that which article you can take up to study at the beginning. Okay, so here I have mentioned a bit orientation about the services which our university Vishwarthi can access. You can use the same uh, methodology to find out which are the accessible uh, databases, e-resources are available for Vishwarthi only. Okay, so I'm just keeping it. Okay, so now to write, what happens uh, when you go for writing, uh, we become puzzled. Why? Because we have studied those things from different, different articles, different, different ideas. Uh, we have taken the ideas from different, different books, different, different uh, publications, different uh, websites as well. So we got confused. Okay, what to write, which particular line will fit to article uh, in articles uh, methodology and in articles discussion we got a bit confused so in those areas there are some assistive tools as as well uh, which can incorporated with microsoft word and you can use it while you are writing 
to make your writing more precise and more authentic. Okay. So um, it's like uh, when you are writing using a common sense is okay, but we have to be skeptical that whether it is acceptable in my domain or fitting in my domain or not. So there you have to be skeptical. Okay. So I uh, here four or five tools I have mentioned. The first one is Jotero. I guess all of you know about Jotero. You know how to integrate Jotero in Microsoft Word. All of you know. Zotero is actually a reference management software, which is now very common for academic writers and researchers. Why? Because while you are working with a lot of articles, for example, 500, uh, 5,000, 6,000 articles, it is not humanly possible to make the uh, exact referencing for each and every paper manually. It will be uh, like a hilarious task. Because I have written a paper with like 50 articles. It was difficult for me to manage the only 50 articles there. But where to refer, how to refer and this kind of thing. So here it become hand handy that if you use Jotero or Mendeley, Mendeley is actually a sub part or subsidiary company of Elsevier as well. Uh, but Zotero is a more dedicated software. So I will suggest ke if someone asks my opinion that which one is more user friendly, I will go with Jotero because Jotero will give you a lot of space and lot of uh, like user friendly interface. That is why Jotero is way more handy. I will give you a demonstration of Jotero as well. Second one is the Grammarly. You all people know about Grammarly to write a document. Grammarly is very useful because it will suggest you that whether you are making a mistake in grammar or not. But sometimes it is very much misleading as well. So people say, um, I am, there are many people uh, who says that Grammarly is actually not that scientific for academic writing. Why? Because you write something and Grammarly start to say, no, 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 you are writing, uh, you are writing wrong. So you just go for a like review. So what happens? Ke your concentration breaks. Grammarly made another mistake as well. When you incorporate Grammarly into your Microsoft Word, your word becomes acting slow. Your word will act slow. So when you write something, if the computer is not responding in that proper way, you will face difficulties. Your concentration will break. Okay. So what I suggest for these kind of logical problems, I suggest to keep your grammarly in quiet mode while you are writing. When you finish a portion of your writing, start grammarly again and check for the mistakes. You're getting my point. When you are writing, make your Grammarly stop. Then after writing, go for a mentally check. The both ways you are doing the same thing, but in different time. Okay. So the third one is the lead map AI or like connected papers or like boss view. People can say, okay, uh, why you are saying okay, AI can be used in research. Okay. But if you go in lead map, there is nothing to be worried about. Why? Because it only shows you the connected papers. If you search a term in lit map that I am trying to know about that gender and development or for example, transgenders, uh, reproductive health, it will give you some connected papers, a map of, it says lit map. Map means it a map of the, all the literatures which has been published throughout the years and uh, which can be accessed through different, different websites in a, single window. So there you can find out whether a particular article is useful for you or not, or whether you go for article or not. So the base level uh, consideration you can come up with through this lead map AI or like the boss view AI. These are the very useful tools, but you have to explore at the beginning because all of them have different interfaces. All of them have different uh, like uh, potentials. So you have to explore. Okay. You can incorporate as well. You can use the same search in lit map in connected papers as well. Then only you can re-verify 
whether a ai is leading you to the right point or in a vague way okay so last one is the drill bit i guess people all all people know about drill bit because drill bit is a plagiarism detection software and uh, for any kind of academic writing there should not be any plagiarism at least less than 10% so that people will consider your article or your thesis as a good thesis or good article okay okay so to publish so in publication but we personally not we personally what i have found difficulties is like for which journal i will go to publish that in which journal my publication will fit people will read if i go for a publication which is uh, like we uh, which is very much in for example social science but not in my domain for example i am studying the reproductive health of transgender if it is not in transgenders if it is not covering the transgenders uh, what to say like domain then no one is going to read your article because the cater the um, the uh, what to say uh, like the coverage area of the journal is not that wide which you are searching for so you have to narrow down that in which journal i will go for publication or i will go for publishing so there are different 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 ways of publication and for each and every type of writing for example which i have mentioned that for um, what to say research article to publish essays to publish uh, commentary to publish discussion there should be different different journals or if it is not there then different different sections will be there for example uh, if you go for a discussion paper epw is the best because epw has a dedicated section which says this section takes to, um, like uh, has the paper which are discussions they have the commentary part as well these are the commentaries these are the research articles these are the review articles so each for each and every kind of academic writing you will get a dedicated window okay uh okay so the most common and appreciated way of publishing uh, for researcher and academicians is the research article publishing because it is more composite short and easy to understand if i publish a book and if i publish an article people will go for the article first not for the book but actually book has taken the more effort more ideas more time more dedication obviously but people will read the article first so what people should do is like uh, before writing a book i would suggest personally or i will go for a article first that if i am getting some ideas getting some data i will write an article first then i will go for a book okay okay so it's like to publish your article uh, to first the first step to publish an article is to find a suitable journal in that sense if you don't find the suitable journal uh, if you publish somewhere else uh, it is not going to affect you anyway okay so there are a lot of predatory journals you all people know uh, so like uh, if you uh, go for a publishing and you have a like uh, for example uh, a goal that i will publish 500 papers in one year and you are going for a predatory publishing there is no point of publishing because it is not going to affect you anyway okay okay so how to find out the exact journal that uh, which journal is going to be beneficial for me in my uh, particular domain so the, there are different ways to find out the suitable journal for the article uh, while it can be both manually and uh, right now there is uh, different different websites and especially the publishing houses has their own journal finder tools what you have to just do you have to copy the abstract and paste it into their journal suggested tools under that for example if it is in springer nature you are using the springer nature's journal finder tool it will find out some of the suitable journals for you that in which journal you can publish so that can be done using their services but initially what people used to do is to find it out manually but the actual thing is if you use both of them 
in hybrid mode or in mixed how like you are searching your article uh, your journal manually as well as well as you are using the journal finder tools then you incorporate you come up with an idea that which particular journal is going to fit in my domain okay okay so there are a lot of journal ind indexing websites as well uh, for example uh, web of science is there scopus is there uh, schemago journal ranking is actually using the data source of scopus so um, you will find the uh, if i am not wrong i am not that sure about this thing because uh, this is a very vast kind of thing and i think jishnuda or nimayda will know better than me that uh, what kind of uh, indexing uh, for example indexing journal indexing websites we should use for uh, finding these kind of things so there is ugc ki list as well and duas as well so uh, if i ask you people that uh, uh, that uh, if you go for a publication uh, which kind of journal you are going to publish that is open access or closed access if i ask you that you have a article you are going for a publication which kind of journal you will choose that is has like like uh, a open access journal or like a closed access or hybrid mode journal the journal which already has subscription from our university okay that is more of a like a closed access journal in closed that access yeah but in open access you know about open access and closed access no yeah open access journal means everyone can access that article without being an university or anything like that you can use you can read the full full whole article that is open access so in which kind of journal you will target open or closed or subscription based journal closed means subscription based journals actually i will prefer open access journal open access journal anyone else okay so everyone will say ki okay, i will go for a open access journal why because it will cater more people rather than a subscription based journal why because it is openly accessible and people can use it ac accessible it from anywhere anywhere so my uh, readers will be more so i will there is a high possibility to get more citations as well okay but the main thing which we don't consider is the apc charge okay for most of if i am not wrong sir will correct me if i uh, like say it wrong that most of the open sources like open access journal which i have found in my domain specially i have gone for a publication there uh, in their uh, home page they have this open access fees or open access protocols there we will find that there will be a apc charge okay so one can say ke okay i will give an good amount of apc charge and i will publish for open access and that will be uh, more beneficial for me because i am getting more citations okay so what i found that at least in social science for the open access i have gone through they are charging more than uh, for example the last one i have checked and i think i have uh, mentioned that somewhere it was charging about 1 lakh 90000 for an article to publish okay so now think if a researcher who is doing his who is doing his research uh, using his own funding is it feasible or possible for him or her to publish after paying him 1 lakh and 90000 of payment no na it is not feasible in that sense it is not possible i should not use the term possible it is not feasible because for one article i am using more than 2 lakhs approximately 2 lakhs okay so who goes for this open access publishing mostly which uh, i have found that people who have funders or organization who have funding for their research they go for this kind of open access publishing okay so open access publishing also comes with this drawback that it asks for a apc charge if it is not there definitely go for open open access publishing but if the apc charge is there first check whether the uh, article uh, whether the journal has this open access for free or open access with some apc charge if it is having some apc charge discuss with your guide or your uh, supervisor about the same thing 
otherwise at the last you will face problem okay uh, i have a question to ask yeah sure uh, actually whenever i uh, go for journal finder and all hmm. journal suggester journal finder hmm. they uh, continuously producing us uh, those journals hmm. who already who are not in subscription mode pardon i mean maximum journals hmm. who are open access journals okay when it comes to uh, we suppose i am extracting my abstract and hmm. paste it there in journal finder option hmm. they mostly hmm. uh, suggest you suggest me the uh, open, open access, access journal. journals okay so how, like what is your question that how to i mean uh, how to find that uh, subscription journals okay so th there i will demonstrate you okay mm -hmm. there is a sw small demonstration uh, demonstration i will demonstrate okay whether uh, how you can find the journal which is suitable for you and not asking for a ipc charge okay okay so uh, personally which i prefer to find out the journals is the schemago ranking okay if people know about the schemago i guess it uses a uh, scopus database but also now uh, days i have seen that web of science some of the web of science code database is also incorporated to this schemago so, i don't know from when it has started but uh, initially it was using the only the scopus database actually so it is the about of schemago it is not written by me it is totally uh, from it is copied from the university uh, that schemago website actually and that is why i put the references as well so schemago uh, it's not only give you the rank of the journal it also give the rank of the country that uh, as per research uh, where your country stands so schemago uh, why it is handy because echo, like i have used both the things web of science and um, like scopus and schemago as well so i have found ke schemago is way more better because it's give you the basic idea that whether the art, uh, journal is in q1 q2 or q3 q4 so what is q1 q2 q3 q4 i will come to that but uh, it's like uh, more handy in that sense to use schemago okay rather than web of science so the schemago journal ranking what it says it's used the database of scopus obviously and it is based on the citation index uh, which the particular journal has uh, got uh, during the last year uh, obviously if you are searching the journal in 2014 Uh, 24. It means you are getting the ranking of 2023. Okay, so Schemago journal ranking is always one year late because it is not possible to give you the real time data. Okay, okay. So um, there will be four categories. That is Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. There will be some color codes as well. That is green, yellow, orange, and red. And obviously, you people all know that who comes first in the class is the best. so the q1 journals are the best journals okay so uh, if you are in the you are choosing the q1 journals then you are choosing a great journal okay but the issue is q1 journals are the very high quality journals okay so you have to understand that whether you have that quality to publish your article in q1 journal or not so you have to explore that journal first when you find out someone uh, some journal exactly matching your domain exactly matching your title you have to explore it further you have to go for the papers sample papers when you understand the sample papers read the sample papers you will get an idea that whether my article will fit into that journal or not okay okay so the accessibility which you have said the accessibility most of the cases i have uh, i am getting the open access journals and open access journal are asking for the apc charges okay so to open access journals the obviously open access journals most in most cases they have the like apc charge okay so what i do personally i actually go for a schemago journal ranking okay i search my domain there or search my uh, topic there then i will get some uh, results i just export the export the data okay that what what journals in which uh, domain are there this one
is it visible so uh, what i do na yeah, whenever i got some data i will export it after extracting it from the schemago journal ranking what i do i made some columns okay okay name publisher origin uh, from which country it is from uh, for example domain subject ki ki ache access whether the access is open access or hybrid access so the thing is uh, most cases there will be no closed access kind of thing they will say we have a hybrid mode of publishing hybrid means whether you choose that your article is going to be a open access open access or a subscription based article okay i basically go for a subscription based or like hybrid mode of publishing why because i don't have that kind of money to give the apc charge to be honest okay so that's why i go for these kind of journals who which has this hybrid kind mode of uh, for example uh, publishing okay so this is the first one Public health review. Public health review is there. Uh, home page. You click on the home page. Hmm. So this is a uh, like I have searched and I have found two uh, two uh, same kind of journals. Okay, which has the same kind of impact factor. Fifty one impact factor is there. Okay. So the journal the journal impact factor is three point five here. Okay. So if you go for the um, what to say. Papers, also papers about the journal. Uh, uh, here for the authors, for the authors, right column. For the authors, publishing fees. Okay, so now you can found. Okay, this is an open access journal. Okay, so they are asking for a systematic review. There should be one thousand nine hundred and eighty, I guess. Okay, so in Indian rupees, it is it is a Swiss journal. So it is in 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 Indian rupees. It is one lakh ninety thousand around. Okay. So this is the this is the example of one journal which is open access and asking for a APC charge. Okay. Now go to the Excel sheet again. The second one is is see. From the Taylor and Francis, I guess. Uh, yeah, this place. Open the thing. Okay. So, it, it this is a journal from Taylor and Francis. They have the same kind of age index, fifty one age index. Okay. They are matching the same kind of domain of mine. And they have a like open access fees as well. They are asking for APC charge as well. Okay, but they will say, "Hey, if you are choosing this open access kind of thing, then only you have to pay. Otherwise, if you are not choosing for open access, you don't have to pay. You can give your article and publish it here. Okay." Now the thing is, in most cases, Taylor and Francis is available in most of the central universities and universities as well. In some cases, at least in Vishwavarthi, we have the access of this journal. Okay. So for me, which one is better? Obviously, this one. If it is matching the exact domain, if it if it is from a good publishing house, if it has the same kind of impact factor or age index, then this one is. Far more better than me, for me. Now I think I have addressed your question, that uh, for which I should go, in some extent. The second one is that uh, you said K uh, for uh, for the SJR or like the suggested tools. They are asking for the open access kind of thing. O always they are suggesting open access, where I can found the like hybrid mode of publishing as well, na. No? So 
here you can find that uh, all subjects, subject areas, you can see that what are written here. This is the Schumago journal ranking homepage. You just come here. Don't go for a suggester. Okay, just go here. You have some like basic keywords, for example, health, public health, this kind of thing. Okay, you search. You search, then only you will get a list. For example, layer one, two, three, four, there are a lot of uh, journals now. They are all are in Q1, Q1 kind of journal. You can see Q1 journals. Just open your See, there is an option that's called only open access journal. Only open access journal will be shown here. Okay, but if it is not your interest, then you have to exclude it. And through like the if you change the advanced search options, you will get to your exact journal. Okay. So from here only, I will suggest ke, uh, you go for this kind of uh, SGR, kind, SGR kind of website and find your journal. Why? Because nowadays people directly ask whether your journal in which you have published, it is in Q1, Q2, Q3 or Q4. They will now not, uh, not going to ask about the journal name as well. In some university I have found. I have said ke, I have published an article. And they will ask okay, in which quarter it is according to age like SGR it is in Q1, Q2, Q3 or Q4. Okay, so very much technical, this kind of very much, very much technical and I can't uh, like give you an overview in five minutes or 10 minutes. I think I am out of time actually. Still, it is not that easy to cover all the thing. Okay, so accessibility, I think I have covered. And lastly, uh, what I will conclude that for the academic writing is actually a skill and each and every skill which have, we have, we are actually, we have actually acquired the skill. If you want, we can write it in that way. Uh, don't, don't worry about where to start, just start. Uh, it's not necessary that the introduction part should be written at the, uh, at the beginning as it is in the introduction. You can write it later as well. Uh, but you have to start somewhere. Take your own decision about the journal. Uh, no one is going to uh, like suggest you exactly whether the article uh, journal is beneficial for you or not. This is you. Uh, this is up to you. You have to find it out. Okay. Uh, use the integration and assistive tools, for example, the uh, like uh, Zotero kind of thing, to write in a proper way to manage your time as well. Okay. Discussion, uh, discuss about the ideas with your colleagues, your friends and all. And lastly, collaborate with other scholars so that your idea will be broadened. Okay. So lastly, to conclude to, that I will request you all that keep asking questions until and unless we ask question, we'll not get an answer. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Shudipta Mondol. Da, actually, you are just senior of us. So, uh, for your for sharing your. Uh, thank you. Once again. Uh, Sudipto Mondol uh, actually. So uh, for sharing your actual the valuable and insightful talk and you have shared your experience that we can actually we are the newcomer in the research field and we can use these types of uh, experience and, on, and knowledge in our upcoming research. And uh, also thank you for delivering us such a uh, thing that can uh, broaden our minds that we can utilize uh, little little things like that you have mentioned that read 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 write read write and read 
if i'm right okay so uh, these types of things can also help us to think um, to think and also to think so now uh, we uh, we would like to open the floor uh, for questions from our audience and further discussions uh, the online attendees if you anyone have any questions you may raise the hands or you can ask directly in the online and also yeah or also you can write in the chat box and uh, uh, from the physical mode attendees you can if you have any questions you may ask and or you may raise your hands anyone have any questions Am I audible? Yes. Thank you for the lecture. Uh, I just wanted to know. Uh, yes, I, I am okay. Ayyappan Pillai. I am from the Department of History. I am a okay. PhD scholar under Dr. Arpita Sen. Uh, my question was, uh, in case we write a re uh, research article, can we use the same as a chapter in our uh, thesis? Will it come under self-plagiarism or uh, is it fine? If you copy it entirely, okay. For example, I have published somewhere else uh, article and later on I am going to publish it as a book chapter in some book. Actually, if you go for the same thing again and again, then it is obviously kind of self plagiarism in that sense. Because if you are not using any new data, one once you publish something in somewhere else, it is already written in your name, then there is no point of publishing it again in that sense uh, it only like uh, the chapter title will be the same the findings will be the same so in that case like it is not ethical in that sense sometimes what people do people also do the some uh, some basic changes or like some um, what to say like the language they they twist it and they publish that is i think according to my me, my opinion it is not right because you are using you, the you are publishing the same thing again and again there is nothing new so i think this is not ethical in that sense yeah, uh, my question was a little different can we use it in our phd thesis is what i meant see from the phd thesis actually from the chapters people usually write um, like uh, articles like uh, for example in the results if you have three objectives for each and obje each uh, one objective you will get one chapter and from one chapter you can give uh, like write a paper as well but it should not be like uh, you are uh, what to say like you are repeating your work like simultaneously thank you anyone else have any question uh, so I have a question. Um, so uh, I'm uh, using Jotero. So um, actually, I want to know that is there any drawbacks of using Jotero? Because this is a software, and uh, if I will handle it uh, towards my PhD journey, and somehow it 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 may crash or something. So how will I recover the data, or uh, how means how to? be uh, clever using the software means using because it's because i'm uh, trusting a particular software and if it may crash or something so how can i recover yeah, the data definitely it can crash it can crash and that is a very beautiful and logical question as well it's like sometimes what happens if your internet connection is bit slow okay if your connection is bit slow jotero will act differently okay uh, you will find mis like problems or mistakes as well Sometimes you can't use Jotero while you are off offline. Okay, so th there are some logical problems obviously there. Okay, while you are using a machine, but what Jotero does is like they have an integration with online library and offline library. Okay, 
So if you are putting something in offline library, it is obviously synced with the, their online library. Okay. So until and unless you delete your profile from the Jotero website, you can recover all the data you have uh, like feeded in that database. Okay. This is the first way. Second way is when you are going for a referencing software, you have to know what referencing is the first place. Okay. So uh, when you are downloading something, for example, what I personally do, I use both things, both the things. Initially, what I have done, I have made a same kind of Excel sheet and I used to put all the data in that Excel sheet for each and every kind of uh, article I download. Okay. So, but it is way more uh, time consuming and it is problematic to arrange. Okay. That's why I shifted to Jotero. Okay. So when you know that uh, how to manage the references manually, you can only effectively use the Jotero. This is also a basic thing that you have to know in hand that how to manage the referencing by hand. Then only you can use Jotero. Otherwise, you can't in integrate uh, Jotero in Microsoft Word as well. Okay. So there should be a proper training about Jotero. You have to explore the Jotero. And uh, I will not suggest ke for your initial first article, go for Jotero. I will not say. I will definitely say ke for the first article, the very first article, go for a offline, go, go for a manual kind of thing. Then you will learn ke how to refer it, how to make the referencing. I think I make you clear. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I will keep in my mind actually. So actually, I am in my initial phase, but I will keep in my mind. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions or doubts or comments regarding this talk? I have a question. Uh, the question is, uh, to what extent the H index or the author's designation matters of selecting a paper in good journals? I mean, the, the designation, the designation, whether the designation matters or the H index of author matters of selecting a paper. I want to say that I want to say that I publisher to publisher that I want to say 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 that I I think okay. someone has, uh, has had the same thing. What you have said, no? some um, like a person who has great age index and who is very much popular in academic curricula. Yeah. Uh, he did one thing. He just written a uh, like bluff kind of thing, a paper. He just made a made up a paper. Okay. Uh -huh. That is not at all a good paper. Uh -huh. He sent it to a journal. Uh -huh. The journal published it. Uh -huh. Then again, he wrote against them. That in that journal there was uh, in that my in my article there was nothing, it was a bluff only. Then how you can publish it? I don't know whether I am right or wrong, but I have like heard of someone who did it before. I think Nimaida. <laughs> Paper from such a homosexual. 
No, no, no. Never. Hmm. আচ্ছা যখন আমি পেপারটা আপলোড করছি তার সাথে আমি ওই এত থেকে এত পর্যন্ত ভ্যালিড ছিল জার্নালটা সেটা আমি ওটার সঙ্গে আপলোড করে দেবো আচ্ছা 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 হুম 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 হোয়াই ছিল হ্যাঁ ছিল হ্যাঁ নেই Thank you, thank you sir. sir thank you so much for sharing your thoughts so uh, now i may request um, sir otik ghosh to come to the podium and address today's session and further enhance the discussion on the topic we have not been knighted so i am a benighted person just otik ghosh uh, not sir otik like sir dirat si choudhury yes shudip to just i wanted to tell you it is not a rumor it is true it's called the sokal affair 
uh, Alan Sokal, uh, professor of physics at the University of New York, wrote this completely nonsensical article uh, with lots of jargon. It's called Transgressing the Borders, and he sent it to uh, Social Text, one of the most prestigious journals, your uh, Q1 journal. It's Social Text is the number one culture studies journal uh, in the USA. And it is among the five top most cultural studies journals in the world. And Social Text actually published it in 1996. And then Alan Sokal, Alan Sokal is a Nobel laureate as well in physics. Uh, so Alan, Alan Sokal then wrote back uh, saying that that was a hoax. He had completely, it, it is a complete nonsensical article that he had written. He just took words from various books, jargons from <laughs> various culture studies book, put them together, strung them up in, them, them up in sentences and sent it. It's a long title of the paper. It's called Transgressing the Borders is only the first part. It goes on the hermeneutics of quantum quantity, whatever. It's, if you read, so you know, this is a double peer reviewed journal on its committee. The greatest names of social sciences sit. You name a big person in, in the world and you find them in the editorial committee of uh, social text and they published it. So that was a huge scandal. And <laughs> of course, both parties had, had their own arguments going on. Social text wrote back saying that even though he does not know it, this article does make sense. <laughs> so, it then spanned into philosophical discussions of what is uh, hermeneutics and etc. whether the writer knows the meaning of the text or whether the reader actually creates the meaning of the text, all that. But it was a massive scandal, yes. So it's not something, S-O-K-A-L, SOKAL. If you search for it, you'll find it. You'll find, uh, I think, articles on it. You'll definitely find a Wikipedia page. Now, um, the point here is that you see uh, uh, much of what we do uh, it hinges on the fact that whether we do it correctly. Uh, it may be uh, that I know I have friends who are extremely well-read, extraordinarily talented when it comes to uh, scholarship, but they don't get around to making that many publications. In fact, they face a number of rejections and they come to me and tell me Jay, what to do, where to write, how to write. So all that I do is I identify a journal and I remodel exactly what they have done in the fashion that art, that journal wants it to read. I don't change anything. I cannot. I don't know what they're working on. I read it. I don't. The data set is not mine. The field is not mine. The archives are not mine. So what I do is I just I just repackage it, and then it gets published. This has happened so many times that now I have made a bit of a name <laughs> for it. So um, uh, what uh, Shudipta had been telling us, and uh, I, 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 I hope, to, hope that you'll get in touch with him later. He really knows this well. And uh, if ha he had been given the opportunity, he could have given us more demos. He just showed us slides. He did the theoretical part of it, but the more practical demonstrative part of it, probably he would, uh, probably Nimaida would give him another opportunity probably a month later or two months later when he can do the demonstrative part. It's a very important thing. Don't uh, think that this is not important. The content, uh, the form is as important as the content. And he has not, he has also, you know, in a whole slide, you know, it was the simplest slide, but the most important important central slide that he had, where he also insisted on hard work. Reading, reading, writing, reading, this process of continuous autocritic, when you reevaluate your work, you read more, you incorporate things. Anybody who writes anything knows this. That uh, Amar, uh, when my supervisor used to tell me, uh, uh, my supervisor was not a Bengali, so uh, he he was he's an anthropologist and a historian, Saurav Dube. So Saurav used to tell me that lick or fir rakde, dovik bad fir par jalika hai tumne, and then you'll see that you want to make a number of changes, or you have done things. This standardly happens to us when we sleep over something. 
we write it something you write it till late in the night and then you go to sleep in the next morning when you read you see oh my god i want to change this part <laughs> i need to take away that part so you know that that happens over months as well so writing is a slow process all of us know that you know and uh, therefore as he said that it would it will take a lot of hard work it would be a painstaking process of incorporation rejection and another pro point probably he, he of course knows probably he, he did not mention it because of the brevity of time is that you know sometimes we fall in love with things we write and the things we read that is another huge problem in the process of publication you know focus of the article is your article focused or are you saying too many things like i the way i talk digressing saying various things that is not how you write <laughs> oh you i missed it i missed it so you have to kind of streamline it bring it to a focus you know it's not as if all that you're saying is worthless they may be very very knowledgeable good things but you just don't need them there this is a training you know journalists have but academicians also need to have to how to cut the fat out of your article because that makes your articles more publishable and of course you have to identify journals sometimes we know the names of a few famous journals and we keep thinking that we'll only pub we can we can only publish in them but actually there are many journals if you use the tools that are available but one thing i completely agree with shudipto after he got off stage on stage he did not say that at first you must know you know this this is if i give you a passage in german or if i give you a passage in hungarian and ask you can you tell me the meaning of this what will you do you'll put it into a translation software and then it would give you a translation and you'll tell me the translation would that translation be correct can you vouch for it no you cannot because you don't know hungarian but if you give me a passage in german and ask me to translate it probably for quickness sake because my german is not that good i would put it in a uh, translation software and translate it and then i'll check the translation to see the, whether the translation is correct this is something you have to know about mendeley zotero and such uh, such tools they are very helpful only if you have helped yourself first if you know how to do citations then they can help you my i wouldn't mention yappan is here yappan knows that person uh, he made a presentation he made his phd pre submission presentation in our department using zotero for references the references went tits up it it was nonsensical because he does not know how to do the uh, references manually so the bibliography was was a mess so that is another thing you have to uh, as he correctly said the first work ka pehla wala khud karo pratham ta nije karo tar pore ekbar shike gele pore tar pore sob zotero mendele sob byabohar koro then you know if something is going wrong otherwise you wouldn't know the errors you can use grammarly only once you know how to write otherwise grammarly's wrong suggestions would you'll keep them all blindly right and the last thing with which i'll end is that of course some of you may have felt i could see that in some faces at least that uh, this kind of this presentation is coming from a particular disciplinary uh, location that is social work social work sociology both subjects uh, i have some experience with it i had taught one paper in sociology at jnu so uh, i know that that of course they have some disciplinary rules and they follow that you know and definitely his paper is coming from that particular disciplinary training so some of you may feel that oh like uh, i am a historian i don't do, need to do things this way no you need to do things this way it's just that he take he's taking his examples from social work or sociology or social theory that's why it is seeming to you that you don't need to do the, i'm not saying that you know there was this uh, giant and robber in ancient greece who was called procrastes so he used to have a house by the road and jokhoni kono otithi keo jabe when people passed his house he would invite them in and he had this bed he would invite them be very nice to them and ask them to lie down for the night and when they would lie down if they were smaller than the bed then he would stretch them to fit the bed and if they were larger than the bed then he would cut off their legs and make them fit the bed this is therefore in literary theory in social science theory we call the procrastian bed what marxists use sometimes right 
You'll fit everything into Marxism, no matter what. It's a procrastination bed. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that what he presented is a procrastination bed. What I'm saying is that it is flexible enough to address all kinds of discipline, at least social scientific disciplinary concerns. And please pay very close attention to what he's saying. In fact, I would request him if, 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 he, if he wants to, of course, with his permission, to circulate this among the group. Ask Nimaida to circulate this presentation so that there is so much information, there is so much uh, leads in how to get about publication, the business of publication. It is a business, it's a global business. Please understand, there's a book on it. I just edited it and passed it uh, so that it is published. It came to me for review. So it is out now from, uh, I think, Harvard University Press, Princeton University Press. So uh, you can read it. You'll see that this is a very big business and it has rules and you have to play by those rules. And uh, this, these rules, uh, he has given you the tip of the iceberg. And if he is willing to circulate this uh, thing, then you'll at least have the tip of the iceberg so that you can explore the very ugly iceberg that <laughs> is below the water and it would help you. Thank you. And thank you, Shudipta, for a wonderful presentation. Uh, thank you, sir, for uh, enriching our thoughts by giving your valuable um, experience or knowledge. And uh, we'll uh, keep in our mind in our further days. So um, from this, uh, I am uh, handovering uh, the session to my uh, colleague, Akanksha. So please continue. Indeed, I think this is the time when Akanksha is going to offer formal word of thanks. But I am one, though only chairs are the witness, very few of us human being or human being going to witness these things. But I am one who is very keen to take deep thanks. And to get deep thanks, something I want to give. Because it's a give and take policy, as you know. So before winding it up, I request our today's chairperson to hand over three certificate, again made up by us. And when I went downstairs, downstairs I have taken a printout of this and going to take it hand over to them through the, our session chair and I make it the program cash, not credit, right? So that I will get cash thanks, not credit thanks, right? So come in front. Uh, I could feel that the room got quite heated up with the topic of publication and I could feel that all the students are really worried that when their journals and articles would get published in good, uh, I mean, journals and books. I Now I shall proceed for the vote of thanks. And uh, I just want to mention one thing. Uh, which uh, my dear sir, Atikda, had once told me during our bachelor's class. I just want to share with you all that uh, Nimaida is always worried that all the students are not coming, not uh, participating. So I would request all my friends and colleagues to please join and encourage this session 
for a better communication for better discussion and be better critical thinking because uh, and also please tell your juniors also to come and join so that they learn how this academic uh, thing goes on uh, in other universities uh, it's not only the phd scholars attend these kind of talks the bachelor students the master students they are also very much keen to to hear and listen whatever happens in any kind of academic uh, scenario so please tell your juniors as well uh, so uh, what i was telling actually so once otigda told told us that it's not about that you know that lot of people are reading books it's that one student if he can make that one student read one book that is his purpose that that he that purpose is done so i think nimaida's purpose is also done because there were more than one scholar who has come and give attention and asked question so i think uh, so nimaida you were successful with this thank you we are pleased to be standing here on behalf of all the scholars to convey our gratitude to everyone who have joined and participated in the event this afternoon as we conclude this insightful and enriching program the phd scholars lecture series under the banner for the scholars by the scholars with the scholars we would like to highlight the major goals of organizing this event that is to strengthen the research support service to develop the the presentation skills of the phd scholars to help them to overcome the stage fright or performance anxiety to promote critical thinking and discourse of discussion as well as to enhance an environment of interdisciplinary knowledge base across the university campus we are utterly honored to deliver the word of thanks on behalf of the organizing team first and foremost we extend our heartfelt gratitude to the bishop harty library network platform for taking this thoughtful initiative for the scholars next i uh, give my heartfelt and uh, regard and uh, gratitude to my my professor atik ghosh department of history thank you so much sir for sharing this event and being a part of this special program your valuable viewpoints and a lucid discussion on this topic is really important and inspiring for us your always acute detailed and minute observations and insights have significantly contributed to today's event success and progress your deep and critical perceptions on the topic have given us an ample amount of cerebral space to reflect upon it for further learning and development with this i will hand over the podium to my colleague aparna mahato thank you guys uh thank you akanksha so uh, we take immense pleasure in extending our uh, sincere thanks to sir nimachan saha uh, the librarian and other library staffs um who promoted the need and directed the way for this exclusive phd scholar stock series program this has provided all of us with great opportunities for research and discussion on various multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary areas besides our own specialized fields and allowed us fertile grounds for exploring our various academic as well as leadership abilities words would not be enough for this initiative and relentlessly relentless efforts to visualize motivate and develop us all into an ethical passionate and responsible academician thank you so and all the librarians a heartfelt thanks to our prolific speaker today mr shudipta mondol for sharing his observations thoughts and analysis on the topic and orientation to academic writing and publishing his presentation and observations have been incredibly informative thought provoking and engaging offering us varied perspectives and knowledge on the topic thank you one second sudipto da at last but not the least we thank all our participants uh, the online attendees and also the physical attendees uh, and uh, your active active engagement keen interest and enthusiasm to attend this event your presence have contributed to enrich this discussion session and have finally resulted it into a collaborative success we appreciate all your efforts and would like to have your active participation in further upcoming talk series because this is the third scholar talk and we'll uh, we will uh, add is the next talk in upcoming months 
if anyone um, of the scholars from this room or uh, you can uh, share these things with your seniors that they may come front and they can uh, so uh, they can uh, uh, come up with the, their research and the, uh, the talk initiatives and they can uh, put their name in, uh, or they can inform Nimaiser or any other librarians that they can uh, use this platform as a, a initiative uh, for uh, the upcoming lecture series. And, um, and also a heartfelt thanks to our acting uh, vice chancellor who came and who joined with us. And uh, thank you once again to him for the, his actual valuable words. And um, um, it's been a great pleasure uh, and opportunity hosting of this third PhD scholar lecture with my colleague Akanksha Bishas. She is a very supportive and also a enthusiastic personality and she did a very well job because it's my second time, but it's a her first time. So she was did a very good job. And also, thank you once again. Uh, we will, <laughs> we, yeah, we'll you will continue in our upcoming research areas also. So uh, once again, and uh, uh, we hope everyone leaves the room with a greater understanding and wider perspectives on our focused topic of discussion. We would love to have more discussion session on wider range of emerging academic topics and fields of study. We are fortunate to have this platform, which allows us an opportunity to develop our knowledge, harness our talent, and improve our academic skills and abilities. Now it's time to conclude. Thank you once again to all the attendees, all the staff librarians, and also uh, the joint coordinators, colleagues, and also the behind the cameras, uh, library dadas. Thank you, Jishnuda, and thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah, sir. Yeah. <laughs>